Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, The Future of Customer Service, Trends to Test in 2020. And it's presented by the Insight Group, which is a division of Reuters Events. I'm Aaron Jackson, a Senior Project Director here for the Insight Group, and I'm going to keep this introduction very short um, as we have a great panel of expert speakers to get to. Um, so yeah, jumping straight into the, the, the panel, um, firstly I'd like to welcome our, our moderator, uh, Nicholas Zeiser. Um, who some of you may remember from our event uh, in New York just a couple of months ago. Um, Nicholas now runs his own consultancy, uh, but previously worked on the customer experience team at HP. Um, and that's where he met our next um, speaker, um, Brandon McGovern, who is currently the director of customer experience um, there at HP. Uh, next, we have a, a former speaker from one of the, the customer service summits. Um, that's Fiona Blakesley, um, who's director of customer success for Intuit. Um, and well, last but not least, Nate Brown. Uh, Nate is the head of customer experience uh, for UL um, and also the co-founder of CX Accelerator, uh, which is a community for, for like-minded experienced leaders. Um, and then very finally, you are a big part of today's webinar. Um, there are over 700 of you signed up, uh, including customer service leaders from uh, Staples, Samsung, uh, Experian, SAP, Coca-Cola, Fox. Amex, uh, Fender Guitars, uh, Nationwide, Walgreens, Home Depot, Wendy's, Comcast, Uber, Foot Locker, uh, and many, many more. I won't go through the, the whole list of all 700, but it, it's great to see um, so many well-known um, big brands joining us today. Um, I also want to give a, a quick shout out to a few of our previous speakers who have sort of signed up. Uh, Margaret from Rogers, it's always good to, to have you in the room. Uh, Brittany from, from Jasco Foods, it's great to have you here as well. Um, and Kyle, who runs our event networking solution, Brella. It's great to have you joining us too. Um, so yeah, we really want to make the most of all this expertise and keep this interactive. So um, please do submit your questions to us. Um, there is a chat function um, that you can see um, on the, the side of your toolbar. Um, so please do use that. Um, we'll be incorporating questions throughout the webinar. So the sooner you can submit your questions, um, the quicker we can get to them. So that is the uh, chat function um, in the webinar toolbar. Um, please do submit your questions and um, we'll be relaying those um, to Nicholas and, and, and the panelists. Um, and then one final piece of housekeeping, today's webinar is being recorded um, and we will be sharing it with you afterwards. Um, so do keep a lookout for, for the recordings. Um, and then before um, we get going with the panel today, I just want to kickstart the webinar and find out a little bit more about our audience and what you're planning for, for 2020. Um, so we're going to do a, a quick poll um, just to get your thoughts and um, see what's going on. Um, so you can see that coming onto your screen now. And the poll is, which of the following is your customer services team biggest priority for 2020? So that's which of, your following, which of the following is your customer service team's biggest priority for 2020? Number one, better understanding your customer and their journey. Uh, maybe you're looking at um, omni-channel and how you can kind of understand where a customer is going and where they've been. Um, maybe you're looking at the, the next option, which is empowering agents with improved training. Um, there's always lots of new training systems and approaches as well as structures. Um, the next one, the next option that may be for you is empowering agents with higher levels of automation. Um, and then we have another kind of automation type topic, improving your customer service, self-service um, self service offering. Um, so maybe helping your, your customers help themselves. Um, and then finally, are you looking to launch or optimize a chatbot? Um, so there's many different options there. I'm sure a few, a few of you are doing quite all of them maybe, or, or more, at least a few different ones. Um, but do pick which one is your, your biggest priority so we can get a, a good idea of the results. So I can see those coming in now. And we're just going to keep the poll open for five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Um, so that's now closed, and the results should be coming onto our screens. Um, one second, it should be popping up now. Um, so as you can see, um, the, the winner there is better understanding your customer and their journey with over 31% of the vote. Um, but it is quite close amongst all the different options. Um, Coming in last, 11% of you looking to launch or optimize a chatbot. Um, I know that's still quite early technology for, for some of you, um, but it's great to see so many people looking ahead and looking at a few different options. It's good to see there's a, a good mix for, for the webinar. Um, so Nicholas, coming across to you, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Um, before I uh, hand over to the panel, are these results surprising to you? Is, is this what you're expecting to see as well? Now, I'm just wondering if you've been listening into the discussions I've been having with Brandon and Fiona and Nate, because these are a lot along the lines of some of the preparation that we were engaging in in, in, in 
bringing this uh, webinar today. So. Ah, it's good to hear. It's almost like we've planned it. <laughs> um, but Nicholas, uh, yeah, I'll hand over to you. Thanks again for, for joining us. Thank you, Aaron, and, uh, and thanks so much to, to, the, to the folks at, at, uh, at Insight and Reuters uh, for, for, for preparing this. Uh, it's, it's, it's an honor to be here, and, uh, and I appreciate the, uh, the, the time and the offer. And thanks so much, especially to Brandon, Nate, and Fiona uh, as well for, uh, for, for joining us, and to all of the folks who are, are, are listening in. Um, I wanted to take, take an opportunity before we got too far into the what's, what's coming next and, and, and um, We'll get to probably all of these uh, priorities, in fact, over the next hour. But I wanted uh, also to to take the opportunity to to uh, kind of reflect on 2019 and and discuss a little bit of the year in review before we before we launch into what's coming up in in, in 2020. So what I'd like to do uh, is is kind of around the horn and, and and set it out to everybody and and ask the uh, ask the panelists, starting with Fiona, um, Fiona. Who did you hear from? Where did you go? What did you see as far as CX thought leadership? And whether this is, yeah, this is a book that I read or I attended this conference or or, or heard this person speak or, or followed a blog, who is it that, that, that was out there in 2019 that you found either inspirational or insightful or, or somewhere along the line helped kind of mold and, 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 and affect the way you did your CX work uh, this year? Fiona. Yeah, I, I would I would comment kind of on two levels. I think um, obviously there's a, a ton of innovation happening in the in the CX space, and I think you know as an industry we're being pushed to deliver more and more, which I think is fabulous. You know, we talk about the, the Amazonification of customer expectations, and those have, have increased exponentially. Um, I think a couple of people I've heard this year. One would be Michael Lawler from Samsung. Um, you know, just talking about how they've innovated in the um, care experience, even things like the care truck, and really trying to go to where their customers are at, particularly in the premium um, care offerings. Um, I also heard a speaker from Rico, um, you know, who talked about just a very different approach from an agent perspective. Um, and interestingly, I think they had... Um, boiled down their survey questions to just one, which was, would you hire this person after a live interaction, which I thought was an incredibly compelling um, compelling question for really getting to the heart of what a customer is thinking about an interaction. Um, on, on the flip side, when I think outside of um, the CX space, I've heard um, AJ Agarwal speak a couple of times this, this year. He's also written a book called Prediction Machines, um, and for anyone that's not familiar with him, he's kind of a leading um, thinker in the field of AI. Um, and he's a professor at the University of Toronto. In his book, and, and when you hear him speak, he really talks about, he, he recasts AI as um, the power of prediction and shares some incredibly powerful kind of case studies around um, the power of prediction and how it changes the economics. I would also say, as somebody who's, you know, I would consider myself a CX professional, he demystifies AI. So it's really a business, a business book. Um, he gives very practical um, help around how to think about where to apply AI and to work with your technologies. Um, so some incredible thought leadership, but also in, infinitely practical as well, which is a, a wonderful combination, I think. It is, and sometimes it's it's a bit rare that combination, right? Uh, we kind of yes, get absolutely. circled into, into into our own uh, you know our own milieu of CX without understanding that there's a larger field out there. So Fiona, thanks. I, I, I really appreciate that um, the the concept of taking these new. Uh, uh, you know that that, that AJ Agarwal uh, comes through with the, the, you know, these new technologies. The question is always, so how do we leverage this? And to kind of get back mm. to 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 what you were also saying about going to where the customers are uh, at, at Samsung um, with with those care trucks. It's it's not just about how can we be so clever to apply this new technology. It's how are our customers using the technology and let's meet them where that is. Sometimes that's anticipation yes. as you were saying, prediction, but sometimes it's just well, listening to the customer and seeing how they use the technology that's new coming out. So 
<clears throat> Fantastic. Thanks. Um, now, uh, since you mentioned Rico, I'll go next to Brandon. <laughs> He'll have words, I imagine, about that. But Brandon, who are you? Um, you know, who, who, who impressed you? Who'd you who'd you speak with or hear from or read or, 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 or follow this year uh, that, that, that you found impressive? Yeah, so, you know, I, I, um, I tend to kind of browse a lot of blogs. And, and in fact, you know, I, um, I have a Google alert set on, uh, on customer experience so that I, I constantly am trying to stay up with any blogs and anything that comes up. I, I tend to find myself gravitating toward some, some of the names like Bruce Timken and, and, and Blake Morgan, who, who, um, who, as I'm reading some of their, um, as I try and keep up with some of the, the different articles that they post. But similar to Fiona, I, I also uh, get a lot of value. And, and so I'm based in the Bay, uh, San Francisco Bay Area. So I have a lot of access to a lot of events that happen here. Um, we tend to have a lot of either meetups or, or organized CX events. So I get a ton of value from going to these and, and meeting with other companies and just understanding um, both the big and the small things that they're doing. It's interesting that you talked about Samsung uh, and their care truck and stuff, because I actually had that, because uh, I think that's a really interesting and innovative way that they're looking at um, transforming their business. Um, I, I heard a talk from uh, from uh, Airbnb where they're using video to get feedback from their customers, um, which, you know, is kind of a, 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 a newer venture uh, where a lot of companies, at least, that I've heard from haven't really figured out, you know, do we want to take video and some of the risk involved with that. Um, another one that stands out is uh, uh, are the folks at USAA. They are doing some really innovative testing and piloting around how to uh, automate their service experience for certain um, types of engagement, depending on, you know, if somebody calls and needs help with something that's quite simple, having an automated uh, voice bot who's actually talking them through that in a really compelling and interesting way, but also able to hand them off to a live agent if something gets, uh, let's say, out of whack. So I think there's just a lot of innovation happening and really getting out there and connecting with the different companies, understanding how they are trying to adopt this new technology um, and are thinking about the ways to improve really the ROI of their CX um, is that it, it, it's fascinating and it also just triggers ideas of how you bring it back into your company. That's awesome, Brandon. Appreciate that. Uh, certainly, um, uh, the, the the concept of again, you know, kind of going back to what Fiona was saying to using these new technologies and, and and USA using their their automation. It's also great to hear and 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 of course. I'd recommend this, and I'm sure the the entire panel would to anybody. Get outside of your profession. Get outside of your your own industry. And and you know Fiona with examples from 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 Samsung, you know, and and and, and Rico, and 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 outside of CX altogether with AJ Agarwal. And then Brandon, your examples of Airbnb and USAA. That's not a hard. Those aren't hardware companies. And so this is it's it's, it's great to look out there and 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 see how we can to again that a, a Amazonization. <laughs> And I can't say it as well as you did. But maybe it's the accent makes it come out uh, much, much I nicer. think yeah. so. Yeah, it's it's this it's this cross pollination of how do we use things and 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 how are we dynamic in 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 the way that we approach this. So Brandon, great. Speaking of outside of your industry, Nate is uh, <laughs> as co-founder of the CX Accelerator. Of course, you're exposed to lots of stuff. You're 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 certainly not bound. Um, not that any of us are to to. Well, this is what I do as a day job from you know for a living. You're you're exposed to a lot. So I'd love to hear. Um, you know who who were you watching and in, in who impressed you this year? Uh, yeah, love those answers from Fiona and Brandon. So thank you for that. I need to take some notes there. But uh, yeah, I had the privilege of having a community of folks that are inputting all kinds of interesting ways that they're learning and growing as CX professionals. And I, I found for a while, I'm not going to solve problems sitting in the walls of my office very often. <laughs> it's about getting out, having new energy, new perspectives, new life. That's what really helps me to solve the problem. So I love webinars like this where we get to do that. So I do have a person that's really stood out for me, and it is Denise Leone. Saw her speak at a conference in the fall a couple of years ago and started reading a Fusion from her and some of her other materials and have just been blown away by her philosophy and her approach 
in that book, Fusion in particular, really hit me where I was at. I, I couldn't put into words some of the frustration that I had as a practitioner of, of, around this concept, but you're, you're taking a brand promise as a CX professional. We're, we're telling the world who we are and what we can do for them, but it's customer experience that makes that the reality. <laughs> you know, people don't believe what we put on the website anymore. I've, I've seen a statistic people believe like 16% of what they read on the website. So if, if it's not if it's not what we say we are that's feeling the brand promise, then what is it? It's what one customer says to another. So the reality of our brand is is the customer experience, and, and I just love the authenticity that comes from that. And so Denise really breaks down how can we take a culture, an authentic culture, and a wonderful employee experience and then mirror that in a way that's going to drive CX and drive that brand promise. And I, I just love how she breaks that out. Yeah, great. Thanks, Nate. You know, that's that that is something that that, that I uh, emphasize with my clients also is to make sure that your CX strategy is aligned with that brand and your corporate strategy. It's one thing to come in, uh, you know, as as this brilliant CX mind and say, hey, let's be more customer centric, but it has to reflect that it's it's walking the walk. Right, Nate. And, and in that sense, it's uh, it, I, I heard it once said that if you want to change perception, change reality. And if you're not living that out and your customers aren't experiencing what you say your brand is all about, then guess what? They're not going to believe it. Just like you said, they're not going to believe it just because you say it. So well that's said. great. So just like you, Nate, I am scribbling down names as, as we talk here. And Denise Leone is definitely on the top of uh, top of the list now. So if anybody is out there, that'll be on my uh, Amazon uh, wish list soon enough. So um, thanks, Nate. And, and, and uh, as, as we move now, let's, let's, let's transition into discussing, you know, the future and what's coming up and since we have the uh, uh, we since we have Nate here and and as the as the co-founder of CX accelerator I've decided that let's go ahead Nate and let's use your four disciplines to, oh. to frame the discussion so well, you, um, that, oh, sure. it's, it's my pleasure you made it easier for me uh, <laughs> as, as you look if, if you if anybody who isn't familiar uh, with with CX accelerator there there are, there are four four disciplines and they start off with uh, CX strategy and leadership then they work through the voice of the customer experience engineering and and then on to the employee experience and culture. And I know this panel has got a lot to talk about with employee experience. So let's briefly touch on the on 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 the trends upcoming or what we expect to see in 2020 around CX strategy, voice of the customer, uh, experience engineering, and then and, and and then we'll get uh, again to that employee experience. All three of the panelists, I think, are are interested in discussing that for sure. But let's start off first with with CX strategy as we look forward into uh, into 2020 and think about what the trends might be and what to expect when it comes to overall strategy overall leadership within the cx space and this and, and let's let's open this broadly to across industries um what do the panelists see coming up in 2020 that, that are going to be those trends from that again that strategic high level view let's go ahead and start with nate since it's uh since it since it's his framework and 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 i'll leave it for you sure let's talk strategy first i think there's an interesting thing this going on in the CX space. I mean, we have this really interesting evolution this this forming here, and it almost feels like we're at the the edge of a cliff in some ways, with just this massive transition in front of us that we we can't see it yet. We we've got to make this jump, and uh, it's scary. It's interesting. I mean, we have the 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 variables of artificial intelligence and and all this new technology, this wonderful technology that is changing the way we do customer sentiment. We, we have this gig economy that's approaching us, giving us a, a new way of doing customer support. I mean, it's transforming the way that we source the best talent across the world for customer service related positions. So, I mean, how do we, how do we form this strategy as a CX group? And, and really, I mean, there's, there's two things that are being said out there. I mean, in one hand, you've got Forrester and Customer Think and others that are, are having these extended threads around is customer experience dying <laughs> is it declining because in many cases we as cx professionals have failed to demonstrate meaningful business results but then on the other hand you've got all the the wonderful stats around customer experience is the next competitive differentiator and 80 percent of brands are are changing the way they do business through customer experience so it's almost like which is it 
and and I really do believe that as a strategy for us coming into 2020, it is time for us to really show the value of this work in a tangible and realistic way. Uh, we, we need to move beyond the traditional CX metrics around NPS and, and customer effort score and some of these, which are helpful and they're and they're not bad. We don't need to toss them out. But what we do need to do <laughs> is really show what what happens when we improve experiences for our people and our customers, how that results to changes in the bottom line of the organization. We we have to earn the right to do this work, as Gene Bliss would say. That's that's great, Nate. I I, I especially like the reference to Tuckman's stages of group development there, the forming, <laughs> storming, norming, Indeed. and performing. And, and and go ahead, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I think that's yeah. an interesting call out. So, the, so in the strategy section, I mean, how do we do this? I think we need yeah. to evolve to a much more collaborative mindset. I mean, we used to have in CX work, there was almost like a false finish line of generating survey results. And it was just a survey program. <laughs> and we we'd get the analytics, we get the dashboard, and then we drop the mic and be like, good luck, business. I hope you can deal with these results. I hope these are helpful for you. Now it's, yeah. wow, you know, that that whole part, Technology is, is doing that in a better, more automated, faster way than ever before. That's not our work anymore. We yep. set that up, but then the work is change management, and it's doing it with a cross-functional CX change coalition. It's driving changes meaningfully, and as you all stated, I mean, the, the number one thing we need to be focusing on is bridging the gap between our employees and our customers, understanding those customer journeys, and, and translating uh, the things that we're doing, the things that we're working on, to improved experiences. Fantastic, Nate. Absolutely. Uh, we're definitely at the point where CX is, is like the weather. Everybody talks about it, but nobody is doing anything about it. And that's and that's the precipice to your to your words of, that we find ourselves. Fiona, what are what are your thoughts on this when it comes to strategy and and how things are going to be applied and what's what's coming up next in, in, in the next year or so? Absolutely. Yeah, and and I, I love some of your framing, Nate, around just the, the scale of change. Um, I would agree. I think there's there's kind of a seismic shift that's that's occurring that we're in the center of, and it's happening on you know a number of different levels. I think one is is clearly around the workforce. You know, we have um, you know a growth in the, in the gig economy that really the industry is kind of only just starting to really harness the um, the gig worker and understand what that means. You know, and there's a, a whole host of implications around you know the learner experience how to um you know manage effectively with a much more remote um workforce and how to build their expertise and support um I, there's also that shift towards you know the automation of the majority of of simple contacts of, of what were the contacts of kind of yesteryear um and I think, you know, you see statistics talking around, I think 85% of interactions will be automated relatively soon. Um, wow. and, and so what, what that means for, you know, our human interactions is that those become much more complex. They're the high complexity, high urgency or high value um, interactions. And so for the workforce, there's two different things coming together. There's that shift in how people want to work, but there's also this workforce that are experiencing much higher expectations in those interactions that they now work within. And I think we will see, as well as the automation, we'll see much more of a prevalence of video-based support, you know, merge reality type experiences. I mean, we've certainly had an interesting year, you know, with going live with video-based support and seen some, some significant gains there. Um, I think the third dimension is moving much more to kind of real time. Um, and again, I, lo I loved what you shared, Nate, around kind of this false finish line, because that's absolutely right. Mm. But, you know, what we're seeing now is much more real time measurement, sentiment analysis. Um, and if you if we if we cast our minds forward, I think bringing that real time analytics together with AI and ML, there's just this incredible potential to predict our customers' needs, to kind of get there before they need it, but also to assist our agents in a very, very different, meaningful way. Um, and I think it's important that that is framed correctly with our agent population so it doesn't feel like policing. It should, you know, in my mind, the vision for that is it feels like that friend, that person who is just looking out for you, looking ahead, 
providing insight into how the interaction's going, providing helpful articles, whatever it might be, suggestions, um, but really bringing together that power of real-time analytics with technology um, in a support support structure. Smart, so I yeah. think those three are kind of some of the things that are top of mind for me. It's kind of expectations and workforce shifts. It's the the um, increase in automation and what that means both for automation and what remains. And then I think the third time is just that much more real-time intelligence as a two-way street, you know, for customer and for agent. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Fiona, it's definitely that, that how are you, how are you integrating all of these, all of these moving parts, right? And, and, and technology is great, but if you're not applying it in, in, in a strategic way, it's just going to be sitting out there for, for, for not much benefit, right? Again, it gets to that. So what that, that, that you and Nate are both talking about there. Yeah. Brandon, what, yeah. what say you? Yeah. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And did you want to add more to that? Fiona? No, no, I, I thought you summed it up well. <laughs> okay, great. All right, well, good. <laughs> then my notes are working. Then, <laughs> Brand, Brandon, what have you what have you got to say about what's coming up for strategy? Uh, I know there are certainly a lot of changes and a lot of strategic uh, things going on at HP. Um, tell us, tell us <laughs> about that. Well, I'm mean, don't tell yeah, us. We... About that. <laughs> 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 now, we won't go too deep into that, but there has been quite a bit of change, including a new CEO, a massive reorganization that's kind of resetting our strategy to some extent. So lots of change with our company. But I think overall, more broadly, when I look at kind of the state of CX and, and where everything is going I, and internal with HP, it's really about, it boils down to how do we build better relationships with our customers? And if you think about relationships you have in your personal life, relationships are two-way street. Um, there's give and take. And, 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 and we have to really model that as we think about relationships between a company and a brand and their customers. I think it starts, and, and we'll see more and more of this, with putting the customer in control of their experience. And th this is already happening in, in some ways with asynchronous service, asynchronous support. Um, and maybe even across different channels, right? I can call and or, or use a chat bot and, and, and that, that ticket follows me. Uh, you know who I am and, and, and it's all, all of it is contextual and relevant. Um, even engaging more, uh, more engaging marketing um, that I can kind of engage with differently um, to get what I need out of it as opposed to just a one-way communication, right? I think the second piece is really about that broader engagement strategy, right? Um, how are we engaging with our customers in both ways, both us to them and them to us. It's listening to them and responding, which we do with our voice of the customer, but it's also, it's also about how that integrates into marketing and how you do better targeting with, with, um, with the AI that everybody's talking about, the various technologies that are enabling all of this. And then I think the third piece is uh, kind of aligning to, to what everybody else is saying is, is then how do we use those relationships and uh, to maximize the lifetime value of, of each individual customer. It's thinking of it as a segment of one, each customer. How do we start really maximizing their journey for them, but also for the company? Um, uh, in a way that is, of course, non-obtrusive and, and, and adding value to, uh, to what they're doing. And I think, I think that's really how we start. Once we start building those, really reforming those relationships, um, and tightening those relationships. That's how you start building better loyalty, how you start, um, uh, I guess, ultimately finding opportunities to, um, to maximize your ROI of your CX program, right? Yeah, great. Brandon, I like how you're, you're, you're channeling Gene Bliss, you know, would you do that to your mother, right? It's, 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 it's True. developing that relationship. And I kind of, I kind of, I think it gets back again to this integration of, of, of all of those tools that you're, you know, that, that the entire panel has been mentioning about AI and the machine learning and so forth and automation. How are we bringing that to the fore in a way that enhances, again, that, that relationship? I love your, your, your concept of the segment of one, right? It's like, well, you, that can't be scaled. It can't possibly happen. But yet we tout all this great 
uh, uh, technology that's coming on, all these great new tools that we have, well, maybe that's the right application from that strategic perspective of those tools is to make these things uh, uh, more personal and enhance, like you're saying, Brandon, enhancing those those relationships as as two-way streets. Great. All right. Awesome. Um, thanks. Great, great start. Uh, the, the entire panel. Uh, want to want to uh, make one more mention that um, to 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 the uh, to the uh, audience uh, attending that you can ask questions on on the toolbar. Uh, there's a question box uh, right there on 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 the uh, the application. So as we as we continue to move through the rest of this uh, the rest of the conversation, please please uh, jump right in. I see that we have a couple questions already. Thanks, Aaron, for for populating those. We'll get to those in just a, a second. Um, speaking of those questions, let's move on now to to voice of the customer and and let's talk about um, what's coming up, uh, what you what you feel is coming up in in 2020 when it comes to either the tools the, or, or the manifestation or the ways. Nate, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Brandon, I think you were you were discussing a little bit about about where you're going to get the the, the voice and how you're interacting with the customers. You want to expand on that a little bit uh, when it comes to VOC. What do you see happening? Um, maybe maybe it's a way uh, if you could expand a little bit more on how you see these you know these interactions and and and, and this two way street manifesting itself in in, in 2020. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, um, I, I at the introduction we heard a lot of the brands that are here and a lot of large companies uh, similar to HP. Uh, you know, very large multinational companies, lots of uh, lots of silos in those organizations. You know, one of the things uh, when when we at HP started our really relooking at our CX strategy, we recognized that we had um, a proliferation of touch points across. And just surveys, if we want to just talk about surveys and voice of the customer, we had every organization touching the customer in some way in order to get feedback. And it was silos of data that people were fairly protective around. Mm. Um, so we had to spend a lot of time at first just br breaking down those barriers and bringing this data together, um, bringing these insights together. Um, so that we would then have a better picture of all of the different communications that's coming in and also more relevant contextual ways of communicating back. I think when we think about voice of the customer, we also have to think about our voice to the customer. Um, of course, we don't want to drive survey fatigue, um, but we also have to think about how we're marketing to them and with our CRM, right? Um, and, and making sure that it's relevant and contextual to what they're telling us. Um, even if, as I mentioned, the segment of one, it might not actually be for a very large scale business, you know, it's more of a profile of many that you want to, um, to to kind of categorize a customer in. But putting in synchroni in synchronization your your voice of the customer and your voice to the customer, I think is going to be really key. Um, in addition to continuing to expand a lot of the touch points and make it easier for customers to give you that feedback. So I think I, I hit a couple of different topics there. No, yeah, Brandon, I like how the that that segment that segmentation that 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 uh, personal contact should extend to the the vehicle of receiving that that feedback in the first place. And it sounds like that's what you're saying too, is that you have to meet your customers where they are, even when it comes to the fundamental step of asking them what they're thinking, right? And 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 getting their voice. Yeah, great. Okay, um, Nate. Before before I ask you about what you think is coming up for VOC, someone on uh, someone had asked, uh, what was that name? If could you remind Stephen of the name of the book that you're referring to? And I think it was, uh, am I right? It's Fusion by Denise Leon. Yeah, yeah. Denise yep. Leon is the author, and it's Fusion: How Integrating Brand and Culture Powers the World's Greatest Companies. Awesome. Thanks. Now, um, so what are your thoughts on 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 that VOC? Yeah, I think this is a huge one. I think that voice of customer is, is the heart of this work when we get down to it. It's understanding the hearts and minds of our customers so that we can improve their journeys. I love what Brandon was stating there around our ability to centralize this data and break down those silos and get a better depiction of that end-to-end -end customer experience. But I do want to talk about the, the nature of this webinar today is the future of customer service. So we're talking about that service touch point specifically as well and thinking about 2020 for that. I believe we're going to see a significant reduction in our dependence on things like post-call and post-interaction surveys. I mean, we're, we're already capturing the customer's experience so well through recorded calls and, and other, other means of, of capturing the interaction that took place with that customer. And now we have 
incredible ways of doing analysis on that experience and being able to depict through through those tools what that experience was, how good was that experience without us having to sit there and ask them in the form of a survey. <laughs> so, so when we see things like Tether, who can automate a customer effort score, which I still think is phenomenally relevant to the customer service environment, then, uh, then suddenly we don't have to sit there and ask them and, and get our 4% response rates and wonder what our customers really are thinking about us. So yeah. I think Nick, that's that's where we start is that we will we will start to become more intelligent in the way that we collect that customer sentiment, and and then I think brands nailing I and mean, we've got to centralize it better and be able to depict visually in a compelling way what that state of the customer is, and then as yeah. we move out of that customer service touch point and think more holistically here and more of this customer experience management context, it's okay well. You know, customer effort score is great for support, but then let's talk about the product experience for software. And now we see the rise of things like system usability scale, which is a brilliant customer loyalty related metric for that touch point. For things like implementation, I, I love seeing things like ease of business, which is a kind of a, a big sister of the customer effort score. How easy is it to do business with your organization? What a great, great question to be asking. Yeah. So, I mean, we have the ability to take more of a touch point by touch point focus to our voice of customer strategy. And here's the kicker. Instead of us just as a CX team giving data to the functional leaders and to the business, we, we get their voice in it. We get their input and we say, what do you think is the best depiction of customer loyalty here? What is it that we're trying to accomplish with this information? How can we move from a metric to a measurement? that's going to show significant return on the work that we're doing in the customer experience function. Let, let's work on that together. What were some of those, those significant uh, loyalty factors that we could decide on together? Then let's build out the right listening path. <laughs> and yep. it's not just going to be surveys. It's going to be a combination of structured and unstructured data and, and different things that we need to pull together to get a much more sophisticated view of that end-to-end -end customer journey. Yeah, you bet, Nate. It's, it certainly is about tying that back around to what that revenue, what that ROI is, right? It's one Amen. thing to yeah, it's one thing to say, would you recommend or will you come back? It's another to tie that back. But yeah, this person certainly did come back, right? And right. There's, there's a recommendation program where you can actually track that sort of thing in, in your listening. And by the way, I'm sure that uh, uh, um, you appreciate the nickel Matt Dixon just sent to you for mentioning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it better be a dime. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, thanks. Okay, so when it, when it comes to voice of the customer, Nate, one of the things that you said kind of made me made me ping on this. Uh, when it, when it comes to to my clients, the, my favorite clients are the SaaS clients because they've got this insight already into the the use and, and the utilization of 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 their products and, and yep. their services. And, and it's great transition. So I'd love to hear what Fiona has to say about this, considering um, you know the, the the industry that that you're in, Fiona. When when you see these sorts of things, it's it's not as simple as so. So how did you like it or, or, or whatnot? Sometimes uh, I shouldn't say not as simple. It's even more straightforward. Are you even using it? And, and that's a great, that's a great, uh, you know, picture into the, 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 uh, the customer's voice, Fiona, uh, not necessarily to, 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 to shunt you into talking about that, but what, what are your thoughts uh, uh, from, from, from where you're sitting on, on the future of VOC? I think one area I touched on earlier was this move to much more real time. Um, so, you know, moving from the, the three to 5% that we get with these rear view mirror surveys to something that is, um, you know, very much real time measurement of ease, sentiment, some of the things that Nate touched on um, and being able to leverage that insight to um, affect the interaction in real time. So, you know, serving that up to agents in a way that, is meaningful. Um, so I think that's a key element. Another area within Intuit, our founder, Scott Cook, pioneered what he terms customer-driven innovation, which is really about moving mm. beyond what customers say and moving much more into observation of what they actually do. Um, so we leverage labs to actually you know, work with prototypes and bring in customers and, and explore their reactions to new, and not just CX ideas, but product ideas. It, it kind of runs the whole gamut. Um, but it's often very interesting to see how customers behave versus, 
for example, what they would say in a focus group. Those two things can be materially different. Um, so I do think there's still a place for just getting very close to customers, bringing them on the journey of how you're innovating with your customer experience um, and really observing the problems because um, those, those customer problems are changing as their workflow changes. Um, and being able to kind of meet them where they are in terms of what they need in that workflow. Yeah, definitely, Fiona. I mean, that's that's kind of a, a, a trend that I, that we're hearing over and over is is, is meeting your customer you know, where they are. I, I certainly remember in in you know in, in 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 my career building a CX team. One of the things that I that I sought most important the most important. Uh, uh, attribute of anybody I ever hired was was curiosity right and and it really takes mm. that that concept of thinking beyond a survey when it comes to VOC is is one of the one of the uh, I think most dramatic example of, of, of applying curiosity to the work that we do right mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <clears throat> all right. Um, we're we're about 20 minutes left in in the conversation, and I know that the panel wants to talk a lot about employee experience and and culture. But before we move on to that, wanted to to ping a bit at least on experience engineering and um, near and dear to my heart as a Lean Six Sigma guy and so forth and and, and process improvement. And we certainly talked a lot already about about uh, technology and so forth. I want to use this uh, the opportunity to kick off um, from a, a question from Valeria uh, on, 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 the, on the question box here is, is, what are some of the examples? And maybe we'll just kind of go quickly around um, around the horn here. What are some examples of investments that are being made or use of uh, AI and machine learning in your companies, in your organizations. And we'll start off. Um, um, Nate, Nate, have you got some examples where, where yeah. y'all are using it? Yeah. Great question. So actively using Cloud Cherry, which was recently acquired by Cisco, uh, bringing in all of the different types of data into that centralized voice of customer engine, having fantastic analytics on that, and establishing a theme river, um, some ROI on, on if we make this change, here's what we can anticipate to see happen in terms of the bottom line results and the loyalty associated with our customers in this area. Um, so I, I think it's critical to have some form of a customer experience management tool. Um, there, there's a lot of good ones out there, but it's, it's hard to get by with a, a traditional just survey program in terms of evolving this mentality to all the different types of customer sentiment data that you need to consider. Yeah, awesome, Nate, appreciate it. Brandon, I already know where you're gonna go with this, but share with us some of the uh, technologies slash AI, machine learning and so forth that, that y'all are leveraging uh, there at HP. Yeah, so we, we've we really leaned heavy into um, into just, just generally around tech analytics to, to really extract some of the, the, uh, the various streams of data that we get, um, be it through a survey or some sort of a, uh, a response that we get online or on a review, we, we're really pulling all of that together so that we can really understand the, the, um, uh, the, the sentiment uh, and, and the major pain points and the good points um, of, uh, that our customers have with our products or with, or, or with our service experience, or both, right, across their whole journey. Um, we also then turn and use it to go fix the problems, right? Be it uh, more proactive, proactive fixing of, of issues on products themselves, um, you know, making the products more intelligent. Um, and and uh, but we're using a, the text analytics engine to help um, help us prioritize where should we be focusing these engineering efforts, um, which is a huge, huge debate internally. Um, and, yeah. and the data from our customers helps us break that down. Yeah, awesome, Brandon. I, I you know. As Aaron mentioned, Brandon and I have have, have experience together at HP, and and, and you know, one of the things that, that that we would work so hard on is making sure that there's a constant flow of information between, say, service and support and the product groups themselves. As as you engineer, um, you know, experiences, we're working together hand in hand with that, and and having access to that data and and a way to analyze it in such a way that helps the entire life cycle, if you will, of the, of the customer then that that that's great appreciate it um fiona how how are you all leveraging that uh at uh, at intuit yeah uh, one of the areas i touched on earlier was video based support and i've personally just been um 
incredibly wowed by the um, the impact of that on the experience. So we're a net promoter company, and we've typically seen between eight to ten points of TMPS gain through video-based um, support, which we're also leveraging with screen share. Um, and it's a very interesting dynamic. We talk, you know, a lot of the time around customer empathy, but when I've observed video-based interactions, it becomes a two-way street, and there's also a level of actual agent empathy and, and empathy for the role and everything the agent is trying to do for the customer. Um, so, so that's been very kind of exciting in terms of just a new level of interaction. Uh, we're also leveraging real-time speech analytics. So, you know, harnessing the power of sentiment analysis, other things um, which are new to us, like no talk time. Uh, and we've seen very direct correlations between being able to reduce non-talk time within the interaction and, you know, the overall experience um, measures. And then thirdly, I know a lot of the questions I see um, coming from, from the audience are around AI and ML. And we're, we're leaning into that on two levels. One is around support for the agent. So building out, for example, bots that will help our tier two agents to automate simple tasks. Um, we'll automate some of the role of tier two help uh, by automating answers. And then also leveraging it within help panels. Um, we're going live shortly with, um, you know, chat bots. Uh, which are based on AI and ML, which will kind of should learn and build over time in terms of um, answering customer questions. So th those are three areas I think that I'm most excited about um, this year. Yeah, great, awesome. Yeah, and 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 uh, speaking of those those questions, Fiona, as, as we look through, uh, Rakaya is asking um, what faith that the panel has in the future of AI for boosting customer experience. It sound like you're certainly bullish on it, right? Yes, absolutely. And I, th I think we've only just scratched the surface. Um, I mean, within our industry, we onboard thousands of agents, as you can probably imagine, for tax, tax season. Um, and if I think about, for example, the ability to predict more accurately agent success, um, the ability to predict, you know, customer questions based on instrumentation and product in AI and ML, I think there's just, we've really just scratched the surface. There's huge potential to transform the industry yeah and and nate and brandon would you agree uh the future is bright yeah uh, absolutely right. i think i think word. go ahead brandon <laughs> well i i think absolutely and, and i think as, as we learn on how as, as we as various industries represented here learn how to how to adopt ai where it fits where it doesn't fit you know i i saw a question around like what is the impact of of, of humans on on, on, on the, your workforce and and frankly, you know, I think that question is very far out, um, or I think I think any impact is going to be very far out on that question because what it's going to help us do first is really help us automate um, and and automate how how person automate some of the personalization and help us connect a lot of the the, the customer data in a real time way um, and, and in a predictive way to then help the customer. So. You know, I, I I don't see a massive um, impact on on roles today, uh, as as we're using AI more from from a back end infrastructure to help with that predictive model. Um, yep. So, but okay. but I think I think the future is going to be bright. Actually, that's um, we, we've been kind of skirting around a, a little bit, but I think now is, is is a great time to start talking about that employee experience and 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 culture. And and Fiona, I know that. Uh, that uh, as as we talk about these these you know these new tools that that's definitely impacting how we as 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 CX professionals are in how we're interacting with our our customers we do that through the teams and through the cultures that are doing that frontline agent support so Fiona why don't you share a bit of your thoughts um, as, as we move into the to the fourth of our four topics here uh, where you think certain things are going with with employee experience and culture. I, I think um, it's interesting seeing some of the questions because clearly there is in the industry, there is a fear factor around the technology and, you know, the potential for it to be, you know, feeling like Big Brother and also to automate and, and um, you know, significantly reduce jobs. And I think I, I agree with Brenda. I think, you know, that is 
it's changing the, the way um, that people will work and the work that they do, and it moves them much more into the more complex interactions. I don't see it, certainly in the short to medium term, you know, wholesale um, reducing jobs in any meaningful way. And so I think particularly with our agent workforce, it's very, very important that um, the technologies are framed well um, and that they are framed from a support perspective. And I, I would bring that together with a trend I see more around empowering agents with their own data and insight um, so that there's a bigger element of self-coaching and peer-to-peer -peer coaching. Um, so it does feel like it's supporting them to be successful rather than policing what they do. Um, I, I think the, the other element uh, which we touched on at the start is around just the, the ways that people want to work and how that's evolving. And we're seeing, you know, a much more meaningful shift into people demanding higher le levels of flexibility, much more of a sense of core purpose, um, you know, a shift towards gig economy, people running with multiple jobs. And, and I think what we're also seeing in how people consume um, services is, more of a move towards virtual expertise. If I think about a company like a Teladoc, um, you know, something that would have seemed very radical five years ago when most medical interactions were happening across the desk, you know, now as a population, we're much more comfortable with a virtual interaction with an expert, including, you know, prescribing. Um, so, so there's a significant evolution in how we're consuming services, which is meeting, which is marrying up with this this change in the workforce. Um, so I, yep. I think, again, being ready to harness that virtual workforce, get the benefits of that flexibility, and also lean more into the kind of the, the virtual expertise uh, from a customer offering perspective. Yeah, that's 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 great. And I know, Fiona, that, that you had expressed um, interest in how it is that we support the agents that are working remotely, that are working in that gig economy. Um, and I know that you and I had, had 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 some discussion about that. I'm interested in hearing Nate's thoughts about that as well, that, you know, that you have this new way of empowering and, and frankly, uh, leveraging and, and, and using agents. So how does that, you know, how, what do we, how do we support that? And, and, and what do we, what do we see as far as the infrastructure and the support functions behind that, that type of, of doing business, Nate? Yeah. Well, since we're talking about infrastructure and, and tools as it relates to the employee experience, I, I think we are drunk on technology. I think we've gone way too far in most organizations and have become addicted to buying new things. Call it retail addiction or, or whatever, I don't know. But if you look at the Cloud Security Alliance report, the average enterprise organization has 464 custom applications, <laughs> <laughs> a huge number of which are customer facing, and only 38% of those are even known by the corporate security department. <laughs> <laughs> so we love going out and buying new tools to try and fix a problem without really having the intelligence or strategy or unification behind it to positively improve the employee experience. And I think it's kind of a rooted in us, this idea of protection. And if we have knowledge and if we have a tool that's ours, then nobody could take our job or mess with what we have created. And so we all like to have that thing that has our brand on it and our tool and our data. But what it does is it cripples it cripples our ability to work up across a complex organization. So, I mean, if we want to improve the employee experience, and 8x8 has some fantastic data on this uh, with their very recent uh, workplace productivity report, we, we have to simplify these tool sets and give them the ability to facilitate quick and easy interactions with customers effectively with the knowledge and tools that they're using. Because <laughs> that's, yep. that's not the case for most agents today. So it's yeah. exciting to talk about gig economy and these things that we can work towards only if we're free to serve through the tools that we have. Yeah, it's uh, one, one of the things that, that, that some of my clients will struggle with is, well, how, what do you mean standardization is good? Because we're supposed to be, you know, kind of, kind of to, to, to Brandon's point earlier, we're supposed to be uh, creating these segments of one. Well, the way that you can do that, right, Nate, and I think Fiona, I hear you saying this as well, 
is if we put our processes in the proper type of box with a certain level of standardization, that liberates and frees our agents to take care uh, of, of of our customers in, in the most efficient way and the most reliable way, while at the same time making it easy for our customers to understand what those rules and processes yeah. are. But, but all that being said, I need to recommend a tool. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, Nate. <laughs> uh, I mean, this, is a, this was a blind spot for me. I mean, we, we evolved our voice of customer programs significantly a couple of years ago. We had these cool USB web key buttons that we did and all of this. And I had an employee look at her new button and said, well, where's where's my button? And like just this tidal wave of realization hit me of we have worked so hard to create this this atmosphere of respect towards our customers and we have not done this for our employees. Yeah. And yeah, and I awesome. think that organizations are in the same way that we're evolving voice of customer, we're, we're evolving voice of employee, which is yep. equally, if not more important, we have to understand the thoughts and minds of our employees, just like we do our customers. And the traditional annual survey is not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, Nate, another thing that that, that people seem to, to to lean on when it comes to that that voice of the workforce and, and, and listening and empowering our workforce, mm -hmm. they think about that just as a good in and of itself without recognizing that no, there's a practical reason why you should be supporting your 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 frontline uh, agents and, and and service providers because well they're the ones that know it best and they're the ones that are actually going to be going to be doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon, um, we we I'm sorry, Nate, go ahead. Oh no, I, I was just saying yes, I agree. And 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 having something like a pulse survey capability through like a tiny pulse or an Office Vibe, we started using Office Vibe. It's amazing how much you can learn from your employee base with these simple, really graphically fun, great UI little mobile-based surveys, and and how much excitement and energy you can get around the employee experience very quickly by doing something like pulse surveys. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, Brandon, we kind of, we kind of kicked off this uh, as we transitioned uh, uh, from uh, experience engineering into the EX and culture discussion, uh, kind of pinging off what you had said. But I wonder if you've got uh, anything more that you want to add about this before we go to wrap up. Well, I'll just say I, I, I'm going to echo what what everything has, that has been said, and I think it really boils down to uh, to one keyword, and that's empowerment. Um, mm -hmm. we, by by first just giving access to to um, to more information about the customers that they're engaging with, you are you're empowering your agents to be able to make better decisions and to have a more uh, a more real dialogue with the customer. Um, we see we see a higher retention for 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 agents when they are when they have that bigger that more empowerment. Um, and they're getting that constant feedback. We're humans. We all want feedback. We all want to do our jobs. Most of us want to do our jobs the best we can. Uh, and, and so they want that constant feedback. Now, I agree with Nate. Getting to a point where you have a more robust employee experience pulse survey so that you're, you're constantly um, listening and, and responding to your employees is, is kind of where th that has been a very hot topic uh, over, over the course of 2019. Um, I think a lot of us have a long way to go um, to be able to do that, uh, but I, I think it's, it's definitely the direction that we have to move to. Fantastic. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate that. that great sentiment to, to, to wrap this up on. Uh, I would uh, echo Kimberly's comment that uh, these insights are, are, are brilliant. I appreciate that, that, that thought because I share it. Um, Brandon, Nate, and Fiona, thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to join us and share, share your expertise and your knowledge and your insights on this. Thanks also especially to all of the attendees. This has been, uh, this has been a, 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 a a great opportunity to, to learn from these ex experts. Um, Aaron, I think that we are basically running up to, to the end of the hour now. Um, so I'm going to hand yeah. it back over to you and 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 and, uh, and lean back and do a little Christmas shopping. I know you have voting that you have to go <laughs> do today, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nicholas. No, yeah. I, yeah, just a, 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 a quick few minutes to, to echo over that. Thanks a lot to, to Brandon, Nate, and Fiona. Um, I'm sorry we don't have time to get through everyone's questions, but it's been great to see all the input uh, in, the, in the question box as well. And uh, yeah, so thanks again for, to everyone for joining us and all our panelists. One last bit of uh, yeah housekeeping before we go. Um, I just wanted to say have a, a great end to the year from the Insight Group and, and us at Reuters events. And so let you know that our, our next summit is going to be held in San Diego um, on June 8th and 9th. So it's a little bit of time away now. 
a little bit, little bit, um, yeah, a little bit of a while to go till the event. Uh, but if you are looking for that, that Christmas present for your support team or, um, yeah, something to plan your events calendar, um, please do get that in the diary. Um, you can see the uh, URL coming onto screens now. Uh, we're going to be announcing uh, lots of great speakers at the start of the new year, and you can sign up to, to be the first to hear about that. Um, what to expect? Um, for the event, we'll have over 300 customer service leaders attending, uh, 30 leading speakers um, sharing their insights, and um, the networking is always great at these events. We have over 70% of our, our attendees actually are customer service leaders who work in-house. Um, so it's um, a great place to, to share and um, learn. Um, so, yeah, once again, thank you to all our speakers and panelists. And, um, yeah, I hope you all have a, a great end of year and hope to, to catch you on the next Insight webinar soon. Thanks. Thank you all.